the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So when a preacher goes away on vacation and comes back with such a beautiful bronze tan, uh, expectations are particularly high. Uh, and I'm sure there's the belief that I spent the whole vacation uh, contemplating this sermon, especially given it's Pentecost. And I will say I did put some thought into it while I was away, and I had some beautiful illustrations of the working of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's a great vacation for me if I get a couple runs in, maybe a round of golf, and if I get to read a book. Um, and I got to do all of these things, and I even got to go play in the beach. Um, but my first thought was, uh, is my children were coaxing me to go into the ocean. Uh, and it was particularly cold. Uh, maybe I'm just soft, but it, was, it seemed very, very cold getting in the ocean, and it took about seven or eight uh, begging and pleadings uh, for me to finally get in, and I tiptoed in and uh, got in, and as you walk out, uh, the waves are crashing you, and they're, 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 they're pushing you down, but you finally get there, and you just surrender, and there's not much more uh, uh, tranquil or, or refreshing uh, than letting that wave lift you up and, and, and drive you to shore. It's just an incredible power. Uh, uh, you know, the humans have tried to uh, 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 counter the power of, of the ocean for years and years, and uh, failed to be successful, but when you're lifted up by something that powerful uh, and carried uh, to shore, uh, there's something beautiful in that, and I thought, uh, what a great illustration of the Holy Spirit, that, uh, uh, that when we let it, when we get into the water, when we put our fears aside, or uh, I, I step out from the comforts of, uh, uh, of that beach chair and get in the ocean and really surrender and let uh, the wave carry you through, how exhilarating it is to be, um, uh, to be lifted up and driven. And sometimes when God uh, is working and we're most receptive to it, uh, that's the feeling of being lifted up and carried uh, toward shore. Uh, and I thought that was a great illustration for the Holy Spirit for this Pentecost Sunday. And then I went for a run and I thought, Numa, uh, it means breath or wind. Uh, and uh, on the way out, I uh, was running and um, I was running with the wind uh, at my back. And I thought, I am built for this activity. Uh, I mean, I was, I mean, I was full gallop uh, I mean, antelope were, were trailing me. Uh, you know, I mean, it was a thing of beauty, at least in my own mind. But and I was being carried along. Uh, almost uh, like I was living the life that God made me to live, that I was doing what I was created to do. Uh, there was that sense of each uh, leap being a little bit longer than the previous. Uh, now, it could have been the fatigue or uh, turning back against the wind, but on the way back, I was convinced uh, that this was not what God made me for. <laughs> uh, and then when there's no wind at all, you feel like you're doing okay, but it's not quite the same. And I thought, so is life. So... Uh, when we're going against the wind, when we're not really following God or, the, or God's spirit, uh, it feels like trudgery. Uh, it, I mean, it feels like we're not our fullest selves. Uh, and when we're running on our own, we're doing just fine, but it's not the same feeling uh, of every step being just a little bit easier and a little bit more perfect and feeling like you're doing what God made you to do, that everything is in, uh, is in synchronicity. Uh, and I thought, that's the Holy Spirit, just lifting you just to be a little bit more perfectly who God made you to be. Uh, another great uh, illustration I was going to share with you. Um, and then as I was sitting on the beach and I saw uh, the wind and people uh, with kites, one of my favorite illustrations of both the Holy Spirit and the church and the importance of the church uh, that, that sort of anchors us to our foundation in Christ uh, is the image of the kite. Uh, and this may have been brought up by the fact that um, I didn't go to church last Sunday. This is my confessional moment. I played golf. Uh, and Laura Lee, at some point in the day while I was out golfing, realized it was Sunday and was quite upset we weren't going to church. Um, I don't see my daughter today. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I thought about that. You know, a kite uh, does dazzling things in the wind. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the spirit moves it, and it, it dances, and it does exactly what a kite's meant to do, but only if it's anchored to its shore foundation, only if it's rooted uh, in something that gives it uh, a stable foundation. I think the work of the church and our foundation in Christ uh, with the Holy Spirit at work uh, is when we're perfectly uh, soaring uh, and, and, and living the, the, the fullest life. So I had these beautiful illustrations of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, and I invite you to hold on to those illustrations. Uh, but as soon as I got back, 
Um, and I should say, this morning when I, when I woke up um, to prepare for uh, today's sermon, I realized that maybe the most important thing, the most uh, uh, significant event of my trip was the decision uh, to get in the car and come back. Uh, because the Holy Spirit needs us uh, to be in the world. When the disciples were met with the living Christ who rose from the dead, he was in a locked room. They were all locked for fear of the Jews. They were all hiding out, afraid to go out into the world and to, uh, and to carry that spirit out with them. And Jesus had to say, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. I'm giving you an advocate. I'm giving you the spirit so that you can go out and that you can do my work and you can uh, be the fire and light in the world that the world so desperately needs. So coming back, coming back from a retreat, coming back from wanting to just kind of uh, stow away for a while, maybe the most important thing that we read today, uh, especially given uh, the headline as I opened up my computer this morning uh, and saw the violence that we do against one another. Uh, the violence in London this morning, uh, uh, more reports about uh, the violence that people are doing against people who look differently or worship differently or, uh, 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 or, or oriented differently, uh, the, the violence in Portland, uh, the things that we do to one another in the name of religion in Egypt or in uh, London uh, or in Afghanistan, the things that we are doing to one another, um, it makes us want to retreat and not come off the beach. Not come out of our homes, to stay locked in until the world magically changes. And maybe one of the harder things to do is to come to church this Pentecost day, this glorious birthday of the church, the day where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, which came in like an incredible wind, which lit fires on all the disciples' heads, and to realize that probably that won't happen today. It won't look the same. It won't be as dramatic. Uh, we'll walk out, uh, hopefully a little lifted up, but still dealing with a world that, that's got some breaks in it, some, some real fissures in it. Uh, but I think that's the most important reason we're here, is because we have to walk out those doors. And so the three things that I want you to carry with you, one, that Jesus comes into a group of scared people and says, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. I am giving you a light and a power and a presence that you can go outside these doors uh, and forgive the sins of any and do amazing things. And the world needs you to go outside these doors and to stop being locked up in here. The world needs you to be daring enough to go out and believe that you can change the world. 2,000 years later, we're here celebrating the birthday of the church. So they obviously unlocked the doors and went out. Two. This Pentecost experience is not about everybody becoming one again. Uh, it's not the reversal of the Tower of Babel. Realize that Jesus, or that the Holy Spirit, gave all of the disciples the capacity to speak in a multitude of languages. It didn't make one common language. It didn't make one common people. It celebrated our differences, but gave us the ability to cross Roads to make bridges, to understand each other, to listen and to, to, to speak and to bridge and to celebrate our differences. It wasn't just speaking in tongues. It was speaking uh, so that people could hear and understand. It's one of the most incredible experiences of diversity that the world has is this moment where everybody for a moment understands each other a little bit more fully. It's a breaking open. It's a celebration of the diversity of creation. And then the third. God has put a fire in each of you and dares you to be bold enough to carry that flame outside. And when we take our little embers together, we can make a mighty fire. A young monk in Egypt, uh, uh, in the early church, uh, uh, one of the desert fathers, um, as he was getting started uh, in his life of, of service, he goes to uh, the, one of the older monks and he says, you know, how am I doing? Wants a report card. How am I doing in this discipleship? Am I, uh, am I, am I doing everything right? And the older monk says, tell me a little bit about your, your spiritual life. Tell me what you're doing. He said, well, I'm doing a really good job of reading scripture. I read very faithfully every single day. I pray very regularly. Uh, I, I fast. I keep 
uh, the church year, and I, I, I honor all, all of our, our holy days, uh, and I feel like I'm treating my, my fellow brothers uh, very, very well. Um, I think I'm following all the rules. Then he looks at the older monk, and he sees him put his hands in the air like this. And this is how the story is told. So that all of a sudden, one at a time, he notices that the, the older monk, all of a sudden, every one of his fingertips extended has a flame at the end of it. And he says, you're doing well. But he said to the young monk, he said, if you will it, if you truly will it, your whole life will be on fire. If you truly will it, your whole being will be on fire for God. It's difficult times. It's difficult to open the news uh, and see the things that we're doing to one another. It's difficult to see the disconnect between our glorious story that we tell today and the headlines in the news outside the door. But there's never been a time uh, in my life more critical for us to go out into the world, to live without fear, to celebrate our differences, and to believe deep down that there is a fire that God has set in your soul that is dying to get out and shine that light into the world. So today might not look and feel like that first Pentecost day. Maybe a little harder to walk out and celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But it's every bit as critically important. Believe deep down that God has lit a fire inside of you. And that together we can walk out from here. And shine a light in the world that desperately needs our light and our love and God's kindness and God's goodness and God's spirit. And we are equipped. Amen.